are we live. We're off to the fucking races. How's it going? Just for anybody listening who's listening to this in the morning, I this will be going out uh, live right now. Right now. What a time are we? Quarter past 11 at night. I'm just in the door from the fucking comedy club. You're all very welcome to Ramble Pod episode 23. Uh, yeah, for Tuesday, the 6th of the 11th, 2000, 6th, of no, 6th of November, even, 2018. How in the jizz are you? Well, what's the fucking crack? How was your weekend? Was it good? Got some good photographs of people throughout the whole uh, the weekend. What is this shit? I See, this is, sorry enough to people listen to this. Like, what the fuck is this? Carry on. The dog was supposed to be here. Um, it would be flying oh, I don't know, a whole potentially inappropriate messages for your review for the love of folk don't worry about it lads you're alright Jesus Christ anyway thank you very much more gear went out about, somebody bought about 20 stickers this weekend for our, over the weekend for the Ramble Pod Coleman a couple more people have bought somebody else bought a hoodie if you, yeah, I'd like to see that hoodie so if you'd like to send me a picture of that on Snapchat or send it straight to the, the old Instagram Cool, or just put it up on your Instagram and tag me in it. You're all very, 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 very excited to see my face or just the logo on the watch McCullough up on your whatever fucking attire. I'm after ordering a beer cozy myself. I don't know if I need to keep my beer cozy. It's November for Christ's sake. How fucking cold? How how warm or cold do I expect it to fucking get? But yeah, like that. And fair play to everybody on the Patreon. Got a couple more people this week. God bless you. God bless you. Um, if this is your first time listening, you have never heard of Patreon before, and some people still haven't heard of Patreon. If you do listen to podcasts, you probably will at this stage. You'll know what they're about. Essentially, it's a way of rather than going to shite out fucking what would you call them? I suppose advertising agencies and all the rest of it. It's just a case of the people listening get to fund it. If the people listening like it, then throw a couple of quid at it. But I am giving exclusivity to the people to Patreons because you got to, like I said, wet those, wet those people's beaks, give them something back because it's only fair. If you are contributing to the podcast, you got to get something exclusive. And what I'm doing for now is all the back catalogue of the Tom and Jerry show, which is myself and Tommy, myself and Tommy O'Mahony, which is me <laughs> and Cherry McBride. Um, yeah, basically the back, the entire back catalogue is that. And over the Christmas, while I'm going to be down in Pantoland, I will be sorting you out with some extra Rambopods purely for the peoples. Purely for the peoples. And like I was talking about just there, that's Tea Republic, is where the t-shirts and all that kind of stuff are getting made. Honestly, it's it. you want to see how, how little of a cut. But then again, you can't really complain for the tiny cut that I do get. It's nothing. It's me putting up my design. So... That's another cool way of, of helping the podcast. That's a very cool way. You quite quite literally pick what you want in the way of apparel or stationery or whatever. And yeah, so a few quid goes towards the podcast. But more importantly, you get a fucking thing. You actually get a thing. So, fair fucking play to you. I've, uh, I've, been, I've been fucking avoiding going to the dentist, lad. I don't fucking want to go because I think they're cowboys. That's all I'm saying. I don't know. I don't know what does what does anybody think in the way of uh, podcasts or podcast land. What does anybody think of dentists? Like the last fucker, like I went to one alright for a cleaning, and I, I so I, there's nothing wrong with my teeth, but they say that's the time to go get your fucking teeth looked at is when there's nothing wrong with them. So herself went, she's fucking delighted with herself. Now she went to see the, the fucking dentist. I don't know, I don't know. I went. I remember going to a fellow before, and he had this sign up. He was like a new dentist, and he just sign up. He was like, oh well, come on in and for. Uh, what was it? I I think it was a cleaning or something. I went. Oh, well, that's yeah. That's what I will do. And it was cleaning. Was it was it was a on sale price. And I went. Good man. As I like. Yeah. Let's do that on sale price. You get in there. Next thing he's like, yeah, give the clean and all the rest. He says, would you would you like me to just you know, I'm going to just uh go ahead and assess your teeth there and you know, oh, I don't know what the fucking phrase he used, but essentially it came down to he was counting my teeth and naming it out to a lady that was standing beside him and she was writing down what he was saying in the way of my teeth. He was describing them like, you know, this one is whatever, I don't know, Molar 672 Jaguar Foxtrot Delta. And she was writing this shit down and I'm going, okay, fair play. Uh, so he gets through all 23 of my teeth that I had at the time. I says, uh, great job. Now, I will say, the cleaning was only supposed to be something like 25 quid. I get up to the thing, it's like, said I'd be 55? I'm like, what? What was the, what? I thought it was, 25 for the cleaning oh yeah but it was 30 and this at this stage is the door closed and a new customer coming in you know what i mean you go what oh i didn't fucking agree to that he just said he was gonna count my teeth 
So 30 quid to count my fucking teeth. So just from then, I just got stung. I know, I know, I'm being a fucking child. 37 years of age, I need to go to the, have to have a, to have a fucking talk with myself and go to the fucking dentist. I know I do, I know. I'm just in the door. Just in the door, I was telling you. And I know I say this all the time, like about comedy clubs, but, and they do, they do get nicer the better you get at comedy. They really do, because, you know, you don't take such a kick in the balls either when stuff goes wrong. You're going to laugh at it. So I suppose they do seem nicer in that way. But thankfully, you kind of get to know what funny is. You know what I mean? You do. You kind of you grasp what funny is. Now, we'll put that down there. It looks a bit more normal. I'm just straightening up the screen and the old microphone thing. Um, but if you haven't been to Cherry Comedy Club, it's it originally formed with the idea of pop the cherry. Do you know what I mean? So it was... It was... Uh, yeah, it was just fucking... It's, it, the idea was that every night they would have somebody... Every Monday they would have somebody that never tried comedy and we would be, they would be popping their cherry. And it's not... There's only so many people you can find. Like So now it has just become Cherry Comedy Club. And But the lads run, they're just so fucking nice. And the audiences just end up being so nice. And it's a good chance to try some new stuff and not have any kind of... Because sometimes when you go to places, they're like, don't be trying any new stuff now. I want to see all your gold. It's like, yeah, relax, it's fucking Monday night. We've got to try out new stuff someplace. Like, And lo and behold, Cherry Comedy Club on, in Whelan's on Wexford Street in Dublin is one of the best to try out new stuff. And You can get spoiled too sometimes because you'll be going, ah, that's ready to rock. That's perfect. That is good comedy. A lot of the time it's not. It's not. Um, but thankfully tonight, this stuff, this stuff went well. Where was I was last night I was in an unhinged comedy club, which and I was if anybody was following me on Instagram, I was kind of saying fucking Dublin was dead, just walking through the streets because it was pissing rain, it was a nasty old night, and it's November. And, but um, they had a share of tourists in pretty much. There was a couple of Irish people in, but it was mostly. T- but there were anybody I talked to all had interesting. Like there was you know a cop there, and there was two girls from from Sheffield. Um, and I got chatting to was one chap. He was actually a pro rugby player for the Dragons in Wales, and. They talked to him earlier on the night before I got on stage or whatever. And he's like, oh, it's nice to, you know, a pro rugby player. And he was asking stupid shit and questions. But I was sitting there knowing that Connacht pretty much handed the Dragons their fucking arse on Friday night, on Saturday night. Because I listened to it on the radio. And this guy, even I, I just, he set up front in fairness to him. I, I actually, and I, I ended up kind of alienating the whole crowd. Just asking him how Bernard, Bernard Jackman was as a coach. He's, he's their Irish coach that they have. And it was, uh, we kind of got into a proper conversation, like two blokes would, forgetting that there was an entire fucking room of people there. But again, that was enjoyable. Um, and that, yeah, where was I Saturday night? Oh, oh, Saturday night I was doing, I was judging people. I was judging, judging a competition. <laughs> well, I wasn't really judging. I'd coached these fucking people when it came to acting anyway. So it was like, uh, it wasn't a major thing. Like, it wasn't, you don't really judge. You just tell them how awesome they are. You did brilliant. And it was, it was actually a good night of acting and all the rest. It was actually very, very good. Um, I was out in the City North Hotel. I didn't realise there was a City North. I've been in City West a bunch of times. And I don't know if there's a City city East or, or, or City South. I don't know. Um, but City North Hotel. It seems like a hotel kind of out in the middle of fucking nowhere, just off the M1. Um, it's a good crack night. It's a good crack, yeah. So there was that was there was nothing really. I mean, when they come, when they, the microphone you see pass, gets passed around to you every so often, like when it comes to you or your chance to talk, there's a whole Simon Cowell moment or whatever you can say. But typically, it just comes to me to say silly shit, and that's your thing. And the other two, uh, Carl, fuck, I forget his name. He's a fitness dude. He's from Operation Transformation here in Ireland, and Ashling, totally forget her surname, but she plays cattle on Fair City. She doesn't sound a bit like that at all. But she's, she's, hello, hello, very nice to meet you. Very, very nice lady, very nice. But they were great. They were all great on the microphone. But you'd sometimes do these things. I remember it, I did one before with, uh, I don't know what, I was judging a fucking dancing competition or something. I don't what they had me doing, judging a dancing competition, I'll never know. But um, I'm sitting there and, and Paddy Hoolan, the fighter's on one side, and McGregor's sister's on the other. Now, she knew a bit about dancing. This before she did the Dancing with the Stars thing. But... I'm sitting there, and she was good for the old chat because she's McGregor's sister. Good old, you know, she could throw in the old. And she knew her stuff about the dancing, and then it would come. The microphone would come to me, and it'd be like, "Yeah, you know," I'd say whatever ridiculous shit I'm supposed to be saying, you know. But then the microphone would come to Paddy Hoolan, and since then, like Paddy is a lovely fella, and since then he's gotten a podcast. But the microphone would come to Paddy, and he'd go, "Yeah, that was grand, yeah, it's great." 
<laughs> that was it. To say that that man could not give a shit, or maybe he did give a shit, but he was just getting, it wasn't his bag to be talking, but he has his own podcast at the minute called, I think it's called No Shame, because I'd asked him to come on this one, and he was like, no, no, I'm doing my own one at the minute, because, you know, I think, I don't think he fully understood the cross-pollination of podcasts is a good thing, but look, he's a lovely fella, I'm going to leave him to it, I'm sure we'll cross paths at some stage. Actually, we're, this, this week's guest is going to be a cross-pollination of, um, of a podcast that I've been on. He's a smashing fellow. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it later on in the week. You need not worry about it. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Jesus Christ. I killed a fox by accident. I'm sorry, lads. I know. I know it's, it's harsh stuff to come out with. Oh, it's like there's a, there's a, there's a, I don't know what, what's a, what's a gang of foxes? What's a gang of foxes that live together? They're, like it's a murder of crows and it's a school of dolphin. What, what is a, a gang of, I don't know, a clutch, a clutch of foxes. They're just off the the motorway, just down the road. There's like a kind of a V section where, you know, fucking, I'm making a V symbol for the podcast people. Um, and he just fucking pelted out in front of me. I was doing 120k or for the people from America or from the UK in Imperial. That's 70 miles an hour, which is the speed limit. And you, but you don't want to be swerving at 70 fucking miles an hour when a fox decides ah, it's my time. It's just my time. Like fucking, like Mama Gump. It's just my time, Forrest. It's just my time. This fox just decided he'd had enough of life. But one thing, fair enough. Felt sorry for the poor guy. Things mustn't have been going so well. But he fucked up my new fucking bumper. Motherfucker. Cracked out two little thin things at the bottom. It's like, ah, Jesus Christ. I mean, I feel bad for him. But at the same time, like, does he feel bad for me? You know, son of a bitch. But yeah, I, I I don't know if there's a rutting season quite like there is in deer, but it is the foxes because in rutting season, oh, by Jesus Christ, you want to see the stupid shit I've seen with deer. I, t- I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, how this deer was just looking at me. He just looked at me like, hey, I'm like you're a fucking deer. Get off the road, you fucking idiot. But um, that's the rutting season. They just walk around horny as fuck. With their flutes hanging out, just all excited, trying to ride anything that moves. I don't know if foxes... I think foxes just ride all year round like cats anyway, don't they? I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know enough about it. I don't know enough about the fox situation. I really don't. But uh, it was... Uh, fucking hell, the... Um, Halloween. It was... What's it Halloween night? Because I ran over one a couple of weeks. Like, they're gone fucking... They're gone seriously suicidal. But I ran over one... But it definitely wheels. He didn't hit the fucking bumper, but it was it was Halloween night. It was Halloween. You know what? You wonder about the fucking intelligence of some people. Like they put on a, a firework display on um on Saturday night when I was making my way back. And it was I'm guessing it was somewhere it was off just off the M fifty. But it looked like when you rounded a bend, they clearly didn't put into any thought or thought what it was gonna where it was gonna be seen from. But when you rounded this bend at fucking like 65, 70 miles an hour, which we were all doing at 11 o'clock at night on fucking Saturday night, there was a fucking, it looked like basically it's the skyline over fucking, the fucking, the Iraqi war. Just fireworks right on the fucking motorway. Now I'm guessing it was in a park right off the motorway, but at no point did they go, do you know what, maybe we should keep it within, within a few hundred metres of the busiest motorway around the capital, the ring road around the capital. Maybe we should keep away plethora and plethora of fucking fireworks going up just next to the fucking motorway. Maybe, maybe we should do that. Maybe because you want to see the fucking brake lights coming on. Because, in, and in fairness, it was justified. It looked like, like, because you didn't know where it was coming from, so you just t- looked like some kids were setting them off from one of the fucking bridges. But as it turns out, it was some. Um, it was a uh, yeah, it was an organized affair. A fucking organ. Are you fucking joking me? Like, lads, come on to fuck. It's more about a fucking thinking. You're adults for Christ's sake. Stop fucking carrying on like children. Do you know what I mean? Fucking think it out. Stop and don't blame anybody else if you've done a stupid fucking thing like fucking setting off fireworks beside the motorway. Just take it on the chin and go, I'm a fucking idiot. I'm a fucking idiot. Don't blame anybody else. Don't say, well, it was Halloween. There was this reason and that. Do you know? You're a fucking idiot setting off fireworks by a fucking motorway planned or not planned you didn't fucking think it through and you had to take cunt for doing it so that's all i have to say about that now 
I have a strange gig coming up um, next week. I thought it was actually this week. Got my fucking heart heart across me. I thought I'd cross my wires. I'm do- I I don't know. What was I telling you? I'm doing a gig for uh, Ungarda Shiagana, the police police college. It's going to be down in the main police college doing a gig, which should be fucking powerful. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be even telling you. It's a private gig anyway, so you, it's not like the public can wander in. But I am going to tell you exactly how it went. Um, and apparently nothing's off off the table. I'm very, very excited by that. I'm very, very excited. But, but I better... I tax the fucking car too, before you ask. I tax the fucking car. Here's a fucking thing. So I pick up the car. Um... Well, it's not, no, you know, it's too boring. It's about fucking car tax. Christ almighty, what am I doing to you? What the fuck am I doing to you? Asking you about t- car tax. Fair play. I, I, oh, Jesus Christ, I don't know where I've left the phone. I don't know where I've left the, I know I got some messages about, ah, uh, sorry. Sorry. I will reply to you. I'll reply to you. Because someone came in on Snapchat. I know there was one lady, uh, was it Danielle? Danny? Fuck, where's the phone? I have no idea where the phone is and I'm not going looking for it now. Not at... Half eleven at night. Danny asked uh, about the dog. The dog is in quiet mode. Um, yeah, she's 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 somewhere around the fucking house, but she's not making a, a peep. I went looking. I'm only in the door, and I just said I'll just get this thing going. Um, the plan was to have the fucking dog, but you know what? She's been running around in fucking leaves and wet, and I don't know some other fucking nasty thing. She needs a wash, so she can fuck off now for the minute, wherever she is, causing fucking havoc. Um. She, oh, to answer your question, she will be two years of age. In hence why she's still mental. She's still crackers. Like um, she'll be two on St Patrick's Day. So that's I don't remember much in the way of birthdays, and there's no fucking way I'm definitely going to remember the dog's birthday. But she, on her license uh, and her cert for being a dog, it said St Patrick's Day, and that kind of stuck. It it sticks in your head. So I know that. Um, give me a couple of years down the line, and I definitely won't be able to remember what a actual age she is. For sure I won't. Like I even there I had to go what? one 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 and a half she she'll be two in March. There you go. So she's still a fucking Egypt like she's like hence why she's bouncing around the place like a lunatic. Which only puts her at fourteen in dog years. Like so at the moment she's probably what about ten. So she's still fucking running around mad as a fucking mad as a fucking uh, fucking a lorry as the fella says absolutely fucking mad do you know what speaking actually fa- Halloween I found out something the other day did you know and this is Tom's facts this could be total lies but this is Tom's facts did you know that Michael Myers's mask was actually and this is if this is true it's totally lazy shit it was actually a William Shatner mask turned inside out yeah I know did you know that did you know that Apparently so. I um yeah, so William William Shatner mask turned inside out. I think there's only one way to test it. We get ourselves a fucking William Shatner mask and we turn it inside out. Uh, I I don't know. I, I got quite excited for some reason in a kind of a nerdy way because I I wanna see that do you reckon a new movie is worth looking at? Do you? Um Somebody I saw a great meme actually about the new uh the new movie. Somebody was like Jamie Lee Curtis, you know, she's against gun gun control, but in her new movie, she you know she uses guns against uh, Michael. My- or, uh, she uses guns in her new movie. How does this work? You know, and it's like, what the fuck do you? Somebody wrote underneath, what the fuck do you want her to do? Like, feed Michael Myers fucking actimel and hope he shits himself to death. Which uh, yeah, it's pretty on the money. Like yeah, but I I'm pretty sure Jamie Lee Curtis is is of a logical mind. I'm I'm guessing. I'm guessing, like, she, she seems like a normal enough person. I'm guessing it's a case of, okay, stop shooting each other, you know, and machine guns. I don't think anybody needs machine guns in there, you know, under the bed. You know, you don't go hunting with machine guns, like, so, I, I, unless you're shooting at them out of a helicopter like fucking Ted Nugent. But I think that was kind of the way. But, um, there was some ridiculous, oh my God, fucking, uh, I, like, you, you see you usual shite around town. Like, there was a fair bit of shite now, because I had to pass through town, all right. You, look, fair play. All the family ones are lovely and all the rest, but I saw one that fucking actually terrified me, because I was telling you, I saw, I was I telling you last week, because I watched that film, The Nun. Not bad. Not dog shit. Not good. But not utter dog shit. Like, the acting is actually pretty good in the thing. Um, and a friend of the podcast Rob Steers of Rob Steers Illustration, his wife Anne, who's the boss lady at oh fuck, what's the name of the production company? 
they make the they make the cutting edge and stuff like that. She did the nun, like and had the teeth in it, like had the gums and it. Oh my! Like it was actually fucking properly scary. Like it was properly uh, here. Do you know there's there's having to crack and there's fucking Jesus terrifying stuff. Like it was un unbelievable. It was. Just on, you know, those little touches, those little fucking touches. And I only really noticed, like, I knew, like, I know nothing about this kind of stuff, but when there's those little touches you can do, like, like the, the, the secret giveaway when we were doing Demo and Ivor, what made Demo look so much different to Ivor was they'd pencil in just a couple of millimeters up the middle of his eyebrows, like, and bring them closer together by millimeters. Totally changed his whole look. It really worked. It actually genuinely fucking worked. I was like, little things like that, like, she got the fucking teeth, those nasty gums. She got him looking the fucking bee's knees. Oh my god. It would put like proper put the fucking chills up you. Yeah. Oh what Jesus Christ. I um uh I I I tomorrow the reason why I got to get this done because I was I was thinking maybe I'll get it done in the morning, bang it out. But I gotta get it done to, I gotta get this done this evening because way off down the country, uh, again tomorrow, Limerick tomorrow for um if anybody's in the Limerick area and wants to pop over to a hotel, I've never heard of it, but apparently it's quite a nice hotel. It's called One Perry Square. It's, um, we have the, the launch of the Panto there tomorrow. So we'll be all in costume, meeting the Lord Mayor, shaking hands and shit, getting some photographs taken. Um, they, Yeah, they, my costume, as I told, told you already, I'm playing the Huntsman. So I'd be pretty much wearing exactly what I typically wear, I would imagine, on a daily basis. So <laughs> it's it's, yeah. It's it's not a bridge it's not a bridge too far, to be fair. Um playing the fucking huntsman. But yeah, it should be should be good crack. I don't know if I'd pick up one of the lads. I know Davy Crowley, I think I was supposed to pick him up, who played Ushin and Damon Ivor, who's also, by the way, um and I see I must say well I'm not I'm 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 not gonna get YouTube premium. I'm no, I'm on YouTube right now filming this or recording this, but there's no way I'm do you know they keep on going, Are you sure you don't want a month's free? No, you're grand. Have Netflix, fine. But I see a collaboration probably happen. I don't know. I don't know. Will people, will will it work? I don't, unless they, like, it'll take some going. Oh, sorry, I'm yawning. It'll take some going to match you or Netflix. But this new new movie, our Origins, um, our TV show, it's called Origins, and it's on, whatchamacallit, Davy Crowley, who's going to be, who was, who played Oshin in Damo and Ivor with me, and he's going to be in the Panto in Limerick with me. He's in it. Um, and I won't tell you much more. I know, I think I might have talked about it a little bit on the podcast with other people, but the ridiculous levels of coolness when it comes to filming this, because he's in it with your man that played, uh, what's your man with the white hair in Harry Potter, the bad young fella, uh, Draco. Is it Draco? Drakes. Draco. Draco. He's in it with him, and uh, a couple of more kind of well-known actors are in it, and looks kind of cool. It's kind of, I think, sci-fi, you know, whatever, and... So I'm going to have him on the podcast over the Christmas. So I'm going to let him tell the full story about flying first class with Emirates and the cool shit that, like, the coolness of, like, the money that YouTube are throwing at this shit to land a YouTube gig acting-wise because that's what they're doing. That's what their premium thing is. It's essentially going to be the new Netflix, their version of Netflix. They're actually making their own shit right now. So, I mean, I guess if they can get enough big names into it, they, they'll they get away with it. But it's a, hard, it's a hard fucking push, like, isn't it? It's a hard push to try and wrench all that off of fucking what call it, off of uh, off of you know, Netflix. Christ Almighty! Like when you just scan through it, like all the comedians are doing their specials with them. They're making their own movies now. There looks like be a couple of decent movies coming out. Although I see this one there about Robert the Bruce, and I'm pretty sure the actor they got is an American actor. Are you fucking joking me? Like Jared Butler is idle this minute. I guarantee he's fucking doing nothing. Did like and there's plenty of class. Scottish actors you could have gotten like I'm pretty sure your man's American that they got he has kind of a superhero he look I could be wrong correct me if I'm wrong but it's like lads you sh- you're telling me that we couldn't have fucking we couldn't have oh Judy J just invited me to Emma and Judy show we're so, I'm trying to get the two girls that, that just popped up on the screen there we're trying to get the two girls actually on the podcast Emma's totally up for it it's Julie who well, the girls totally will be on at some stage um but trying to get them on because they have a great podcast. They're up to 90 podcasts and they're doing a, a, a stream of live shows at the minute. Um, I don't know who's peddling it for them, but fair play. They're, they're everywhere. And that one just popped up for Kavanaugh's and Port Leash. 
which I've done stand up in many as a time. So if you if you like the girls, I like that. I, I like I said, I don't know why that just. Well, obviously, it just jumped up on the screen there for some reason. So I was like, Julie was listening to me, and she's like, "You have to put it up on on your podcast home." It's Julie is the major problem. Actually, she's a total bollocks. She's <laughs> I say that because she's one of the soundest skins going. Uh, no, herself and Emma have obviously this this podcast called Up to Ninety, and Emma's a pi- pi- friend of the podcast. I think I probably inspired her. She probably owes me everything for going on and doing a podcast with the head stuff people. I think it is herself and Julie. But uh, no, I've been trying to get him on and trying to actually just lock down a time that the girls can come and do it. Because in fairness, like I, I could swing over to their house or whatever, but it's like kind of in association a little bit. Well, no, we're not in association, but it's just cool to kind of do it all in the in the the old laughter lounge. So, tom- oh Jesus, what day is today? Tomorrow's Tuesday in Limerick. Wednesday, I'm recording. Wednesday, I'm recording in the um, in the laughter lounge. And uh, I think I'm recording there again. I think we're doubling up this week. I think we're getting two two in this week. I'm not going to pump out two this week because I think they're two two goodish enough ones. I think what we'll do is we'll um, I'll just get ahead of myself because uh, I could see over the rehearsal period of early December could get fucking messy trying to lock down fucking stuff with people. So I'll uh, I'm going to try and see could I rack up a few so I can actually pump them out on a weekly basis. Um, do you know what? Gang? I think that's 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 enough talking. I think I've done enough talking now. Um, Jesus Christ! I, I, I'm sure I have millions of more things to say to you, but look, it's quarter to twelve at night, and I'm just going to pump this out there now. There's a Robert Brooks, good man. Jesus, Robert, fair play to you. You put up smiley face or strange. You're watching. You're happy. Good man. Thanks, Robert. This is live on 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 YouTube. Clearly, for the people that are going to be listening to it tomorrow morning, you're going, "What the fuck is he on about right now? What is he fucking on about?" Oh Lord, I got, yeah, I could talk here all evening. I've, I've had a major Hoover issue today, but that's for another time. I like I said, I oh this weekend I'll be in the laughter lounge. I'll actually be in the laughter lounge this weekend, as well as fucking. I may as well move into the place at this stage. I will be there Thursday through to Saturday night. I'll be there with uh, Paul Marsh, Johnny Candon. Is it Paul Marsh? It is Paul Marsh, Johnny Candon, and Russell Hicks, American comedian. The f- good gang of bastards on. Good gang of bastards, and I'll be slipping over, but don't tell anybody. I'll be slipping over to Chaplin's Comedy Club on Saturday night to do another set. Um, so why not? While you're in town, I I don't know if they talk to each other, if they like each other, but I'm not supposed to tell anybody about it. Bar podcast land. Um, I'm going to pop over there. It one got crossed over with the other, and it's easy while I'm in town to do two gigs at the, on the same night. If you are about Dublin, pop on in. Sure, look at it'd be great fucking crack. Um. To all the people on Patreon, thank you very, very much again. Again, this Thursday night slash Friday morning, there will be an, uh, another, the buckshot will be out, but also put up on the Patreon page, exclusive to Patreons, there will be another episode of the Tom and Jerry show. To all the people on T Republic, fair fucking play to you. Keep buying that stuff. Keep, keep, you know, keep going it. Uh, are you going to be in Carlo, Robert? Robert asks. Uh, I, I know. No, I'm not. It's it's just not a no. I don't know. I will be definitely. I will be. I would I imagine I'll be there at the latter end of next year with a play that I'm going to be in a one man play. Um, I have performed in Carlo before. One of the few places I ever had to fight somebody on the stage. As the stage got stormed by an extremely drunk person who I think was on more than just drink. Um, but yeah, up at, right right before now. I don't know. I don't think there's anybody booking any gigs in Carlo. Um, and I haven't the time to go booking booking theatres and booking shows if somebody's booking somebody wants to book me to do a gig in Carlo I will be fucking there with hats on Robert Um, so to anybody else if this is your first time please hit subscribe why not it's this shit at least twice a week normally with a guest often without but there's at least two two, if not three have a look at the back catalogue there's quite a lot of guests there if you want to get through it if you are listening on Apple Podcasts it'd be great if you'd give me an old five star review give the podcast a five star review not me give it. Give the five star five star to the podcast because it helps everybody else too because the more we get the more listeners we get that's the way it works it's nothing to do with actual uh, numbers or anything like that it actually climbs up the charts as per ratings you get if you want to leave a comment fucking fair play to you do leave a comment you can follow me on any platform you want. Tom O'Mahony Comedy will find Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Tom Bear O'Mahony will find it on Schnatty, Schnatty Chaps, which I, 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 like I said, I don't use that much, but I definitely do answer anybody that hits me up on Chatty Snaps. Anybody who wants to hit me up on it, 
I will answer you back, but I won't be putting up much stuff on it because it's pretty much, it's like Instagram light, really, isn't it? Um, I don't, I don't benefit from it too much, but I know people follow me on it, so you're more than welcome. Welcome, shoot me up whatever you want to fucking say on it or have any questions and all the rest of it. Um, as for that, if you do want to shit me out, like you find the podcast itself is Buckshot Pod on Twitter. I haven't created any other pages because fuck me, it's just me. You know what I mean? You can find it pretty easy it's directly through me. Uh, we're on Spotify now. Yeah, we're on Spotify. We're on every... Look, look, you'll find it. Type in my name and the podcast and you'll find it. If you haven't already hit subscribe, I'll highly, highly unlikely that you haven't hit subscribe yet. Highly unlikely. Or you would have turned off by now if you haven't been enjoying yourself. So, like that. Do you know what, gang? I want you to go away, go forth, and have a fantastic week. Thanks for listening.